Romans chapter 1, if you would open up your scriptures today. I'm going to start at verse 17. I'm going to end my sermon that I've been having on faith. While you're doing that, I'm going to pray. Lord, I just ask that you bless this time. We have very little time to do a whole lot, so I pray, Lord God, that you will accomplish much. Forget about the clock, Lord God, even though I know that some people are hungry and tired. I pray, Lord God, that you'll also deal with me to pay attention to it at the same time. And yet, Lord God, be able to get across what I need to get across. We thank you and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm doing actually pretty good, huh? On time. Romans chapter 1, start at verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Who hold the truth in what? Unrighteousness. The wrath of God is for those people. You can hold the truth, but you do it in unrighteousness. That means your acts do not line up with your words in what you confess. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. You know beyond a shadow of doubt who God is. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, be it understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You have no excuse. You've seen God. You know who God is. Welcome to America. If you don't know who God is in America, you have never sought to find him. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but become vain in their imaginations. And here's what I want you to really ask yourself this morning. It said, their foolish heart was darkened their foolish heart was darkened I don't know how many times I would need to say that for all of us to go maybe maybe that's me you know it only takes a little bit of time to step away from the Lord and be sifted from your faith until your heart becomes foolish you're now doing foolish things you're messing around with things you should not be messing around with you're playing with spiritual things that you shouldn't be playing with. But the foolish heart was darkened. Now, if you go past this, you're going to find out all the way to verse 28 to where they became reprobate. They become haters of God. They were disobedient. Now, that is a whole culture that we're dealing with today, believe it or not. They knew, but their faith was in trouble because of the lack of praise and the lack of thankfulness. If you don't have any praise in you and you have no thankfulness in you, even though God has saved you, even though God has protected you, even though you are still alive when Satan wanted you dead. Watch, watch this, because you are not alone in this. How many people in here have come that close to death? Raise your hand. You see that? Satan is here. Watch this. How many people have lost everything in your life at least once? Because Satan comes to rob you. He comes to steal from you. He comes to destroy you. He comes to kill you. And if he can, he will. <clears throat> i got to get my water over here. If he can do it, he'll do it. The only thing that keeps him from doing that is your relationship with God. Is it? I love God. I'm trying to figure out <clears throat> in my love for God how to live that out. I need to know how to day to day live that out. And a lot of people think just because I'm a pastor and Cindy and I love each other that that's going to be easy for our lives. But I'll tell you, <clears throat> depending on what you're doing for the Lord, you're also attacked by the enemy. Okay? I can tell you that nothing in my life has been that easy. <laughs> a lot of people look at you because of where you are today and they go, oh man, your life must have been, no one. No one. And this last seven years, you know, tomorrow, Monday, is the 6th of March. Seven years tomorrow, I was shot six times in the back by 45 hollow point. 
Seven years tomorrow. I'm, I'm, I'm banking on seven. <laughs> because I want the pain to go away finally. I want my voice back. I want what Satan took from me. I want it all back. And I want the man that shot me right beside me, right here behind this pulpit, giving you a testimony of what God has done in his life. But I want to talk to you about the serious things of why people's faith is being sifted from them. Why don't you turn to Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56 and 10. Your children's faith is being hammered on every single day to rob you of everything, to rob them of everything that they have spiritually. And the reason that they're accepting this for some reason is because we don't have any more watchmen on the walls. We don't have people that got the guts to be able to stand up and say, you are absolutely wrong and you need to knock it off. And then you put your actions to it. And here it says, his watchmen are blind. They're ignorant. They're all dumb dogs. They don't even know how to bark. They can't bark. Sleeping. They're lying down. And it says that they are loving to slumber. And if I can just remind you again, some of these words... Uh, and I use this term a lot, but try to stay idiomatically consistent in Scripture. Use that word. Go to another one. It says that they absolutely love to slumber. If they love to slumber, what other group was slumbering? Ten virgins. They were all sleeping and slumbering. The condition of the church in the end. You may have a remnant that's on fire for the Lord. You may have a remnant that loves God and has a relationship with God. But you got a ton of the church that is sleeping it off. And we need to wake up from our sleep. And that's what the scripture tells us to do. Amen. In verse 11. It says, yea, they're greedy dogs which can never have enough. They are shepherds. They cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Every one of his own gain from his quarter. They go to the schools and the Christian colleges and they tell these these people that you need to make $100,000 out the board and you need to have these days off and you need to take that week off and you need to do this and you need to do that and, and don't ever let, let me tell you something, unless you're willing to do it for free, you'll never be on staff in this church because I want to know first, are you called to do it? And if you're called to do it, you will do it without a paycheck. And then if you do it, you will be blessed to get a paycheck. Danny and me and Johnny and our secretaries, praise God that we actually get a paycheck for what we do. But let me tell you something. If tomorrow they said we're out of money, I will not change what I do. I will not change what I do. We're talking about the watchmen. These are the shepherds. These are the ones that are supposed to be the heads of our community that are overlooking our community spiritually. It says, come ye, say they, I will fetch wine. Do I want to get involved in this conversation? Boy, I'll tell you, I've had, I've had a sermon on wine that uh, I haven't felt like the Lord wants me to preach it yet, but it's sitting there. When you read the stats on the abuse of alcohol in pastors, I get mad. I get angry. You read the stats on how many pastors not necessarily get drunk, but how many pastors drink. It would blow you away. One of the greatest reasons. Doctors tell them that it's good for their heart at night. What does the Bible say? You know, the same thing that's good for your heart is also found in grape juice. Same thing except it's better, and it'll help you do the same, but we don't want grape juice. So I ask you, why do you want wine instead? I'm telling you, wine has never done this nation or the world any good at all. Now, you in, in the way that it's processed, I understand what it can be. I understand if you want to go to one of the oldest uh, wineries in the world, you can go to... Uh, 
Oh, help me out there. The Republic of the Turks and the Greeks both own it. Cyprus, thank you. Who said that? I love you, man. <laughs> Cyprus, okay, the northern part belongs to the Turks, southern part belongs. But if you go to the, the Turkish part, of Cyprus. There's an old, old monastery there. I went to that old monastery and we had one of the guys there talk to us about wine. He brought all of it out and brought this little thing out about like this. And he said, the most expensive wine. Now these guys are pros at what they do. They've been operating this particular winery here for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And the best wine in the world was this little tiny thing about like that. And it's like a syrup. And it was, the alcohol was boiled out of it. It's the sweetest and considered to be the best wine and I looked I looked at him there was a group of us that were there because we, we had a, a tour and I was I didn't know that this guy was going to go this direction with it but I'm sure glad he did when he talked about when Jesus would have made the best wine that process is a difficult process and he says the miracle wasn't that he just turned it into wine like everybody else does the miracle was instead of having to boil it off in the way that it was done and come out with this much wine out of it, the barrels were all filled with the absolute best wine. And that best wine lasted forever. That best wine was used for their desserts, was used for their breads, was used for their... It was incredible. But what do we want to make it today? Jesus drank it, so it must be okay with me. Whether or not he did, whether or not he didn't, I'm not going to make that argument as far as people going to hell. I ask you, here, the watchman, it says they're constantly even going to the people and saying, here, let me give you a little bit of wine. The Bible says that wine is a mockery. So I'm not telling anybody in here that I'm not trying to come down on people. I am saying that what we do with it and the way that we promote it is absolutely destructive to our nation. Now I'm going to get off of that subject. As I go down to Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 12, he's talking about Babylon. Babylon, the word Babylon means confusion. So you have to know that, okay? Babylon is where sin was invented. Okay, welcome to Adam and Eve. It's right there. And then also in the very end of Revelation, it says that all of everything that's evil, even the birds of the air, even the animals, everything that is evil so that it'll be brought to Babylon and absolutely be destroyed. And so here is Babylon here where it's created, and here it is in the end where it's absolutely destroyed, where many people believe that this lake of fire that it talks about because when Babylon is destroyed, it says her smoke rises up forever and ever. And it literally even talks about their cries. It says it goes up forever and ever, given an eternal state. And that's why I say there's two eternal cities. One is good, one is bad. One is the New Jerusalem, and the other, Babylon. But the difference with Babylon is in the very end, you have the false prophet and the Antichrist that are thrown into the lake of fire. Well, where is that at the time? And then you have Satan in Revelation 20 and 10 that it's also cast in where they are. So sin is going to end there, right where it started, right there. It means confusion. Confusion is of Satan. And the reason that our faith has been sifted is because we walk around confused. Do we really take the shot? Or do we don't? Is it, really, is it really like this or is it not? The doctors say this, follow the science. When you want to do that, we've come up with such a confused nation that our children don't even know whether or not they're girls or boys. Now you talk to me and tell me that that is not satanic, right at its roots. Yes or no? Some people in here are confused. Is that from Satan, yes or no? Yes. And we need to start saying it because they're not hearing it. They're not hearing it. I was asked from another church pastor. He says, Pastor Tim, have you had any experiences? I'm having a little issue with somebody and want to know if there's any way that you could help with somebody, that, a child that wants to literally have a sex change. 
And I said, tell me where the parents are. I'll tell you whether or not I want to go there, but first I want to know where the parents are. Because the problem that we have is, why in the world are the parents so messed up on this? I don't know whether or not he's a boy or a girl. Pull the drawers down. <laughs> what do you got? Do you understand how messed up people are? Listen to me carefully. Do you understand how messed up people are? That is how confused. And it's a real deal. That's how you know it's spiritual. When you're looking at it going, I don't know whether or not it's a girl or a boy. You're looking at them going, are you serious? Are you really serious? And the parents are going, I need some help here because, I mean, my son wants to be a girl and we want to be able to help him to become who he wants to become. He's That's right. That's what the scripture says. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 12, he says, I want you to set up a standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. For the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. And remember that Babylon means confusion. So all of that confusion that is there. Did Jeremiah make a difference in his time? He made a difference, but did anybody come running to God? No. He spoke all the time. The Lord tell him, you're going to preach and preach and preach and nobody's going to respond. That's a drag. How many times would I come and stand behind this pulpit and preach to people that refuse to listen? I don't know. That'd be tough. Jeremiah did it. But the Lord literally spoke through him. This is what's going to happen. But he told us to prepare for what? Ambush. Do you know that the church, because we fight so much among ourselves, we can't get organized enough, just like a conservative party. We can't get organized enough to ambush somebody. But let me tell you about a little video I saw about the people that are not conservative. They're very liberal, and they don't care about their community. In fact, they hate their community. I can show you why, and I can show you in the video where they hired an institute to come in and train them on what to do. This is the advice. When the conservatives come against you on what we're trying to do with NIC, boycott and destroy their businesses and their families. That was their advice. Do you understand? It's right on video. You can watch it. Boycott, destroy their businesses, destroy their family. So that's what you want to do in our own community? You see, they want to ambush you. Well, watchmen on the walls, where are we? And are we prepared for that? Are we really prepared for that? No, we're not prepared for that. Why? you got to ask yourself, and I, I'm telling you, the, the real thing is this. We just lack faith that God would ever use me for something like that. I think about it every now and then. I have a gentleman in here that I highly respect. Dave Bobbitt has been a friend of mine for a long time. Uh, his, I've known him and his, his family for years. And I've often thought, being somebody in the community like that, what if God all of a sudden said, Dave, I'm going to take you, and I want you to stand in the middle of Sherman, and I want you to start preaching against all the unrighteousness that is happening downtown. And I want you to come against them. Dave's going to go, oh, man, Lord, that isn't, that's not my calling. And God's going to look at you and say, Dave, I know, I, I, listen, you've got to listen to me. Don't pay attention to anything around you because what it's going to take is somebody that the community respects to be able to stand up and say, you know what? I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. When Elijah did it, it worked. When Elisha did it, it worked. When these men in Scripture stood up against that which was wrong, okay, there was not a big backing behind them. Jesus didn't have a bunch of people out there going, don't crucify him. You remember what he did? He healed my kids, and he made the blind to see in the lane. They got up and they walked. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. You didn't see that, did you? Why? Because let me tell you something. The enemy is intimidating. What they want to do is they want to shove 
fear right down your throat. And that fear, your business, your family, whatever, they know it'll shut you up. Until finally we get somebody, like Dave or somebody else, that'll stand there and say, I don't care what you do to me. There is right and there is wrong. And this is where I draw my line. And I'm not going anymore. <laughs> Jerusalem ended up with the same issue. And what's sad is he was going to come down and he was going to slap him silly. But listen to what he said in Jeremiah chapter 5 in verse 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man. If there be any, now pay attention to this, that the first thing he mentions, is there any that will execute judgment? Judgment. You know what a judge does. He pronounces right and wrong, right from the seat. And judgment is whatever you deserve for that right or wrong. Somebody needs to stand up and execute judgment. A person that seeks the truth. We'll get into that in a minute. Do you seek truth? Let me tell you something. If America sought truth, we would not be where we are today. Are you kidding me? Follow the science. There is no science behind what they did. We didn't seek truth. We operated in fear. Now, I know there's some people watching this. There's other people that don't really like us that watch it. And I know they're always, they're going to be out there and they're going to say, oh, you know what? Man, he's always just hounding on him on this and that. Let me tell you something. Fear will absolutely delete your faith. Fear is the devil's playground. God does not give you the spirit of fear, but of what? I love you guys. And if there be any that execute that judgment and seeks the truth, he says, I will pardon it. I'll let him go. Everything's forgiven. You think he found it? God have mercy. In Isaiah 59 and 14, he says, And judgment, which is that verdict, that's the sentence for the crime, the decision that is made, he said, is turned away backward in justice, which is moral rightness. Remember that, justice, moral rightness, stand at the far off. For truth, truth is the absolute, is fallen in the street. You may look for it, but for some odd reason, it's not in the media. It's not in the cities. It's not in the counties. It may be in some of the voices, but he said it has fallen in the street. In equity, which is integrity, concrete truth, he says, and equity cannot enter. There's no room for truth without faith, and there is no room for faith without the word of God as our truth. There's no way that you're going to find the equity unless you first find the truth. That word equity has been absolutely destroyed in our education system today. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? You won't have faith without the word of God. It's fake faith. It's fake. Because the absolutes, what do you, what do you got to live by? Where are your absolutes? It is your responsibility to know what you believe and why you believe it. That's your responsibility. The stage is all set up now for the big fall. I believe that in America. The stage is set up. We have found an America that is so confused that we don't even know if our kids are boys or girls. Welcome to America. God have mercy on us. Because that sin, I'm not sure that God can... Well, I'll just, I know God can do whatever, but we allow that stuff to happen in our own communities. Babies that are born after they're born to be absolutely killed after they're born. And to take our children that are boys and make them girls, we cut them up. And, and I, we do all sorts of evil things against them. Our love for our children has absolutely failed in America 
because the adults, the last three generations, are some of the most confused people in the world. After the 60s, we sought after our purpose, our identity. Welcome to Woodstock. Yeah, that's, that's a good way of doing it. Everybody just wrestling in the nude in the mud. That's bound, I'm bound to find myself in that. Perversion is what it was. We wanted just to let go of all of our morals to try to find ourselves. That's called stupidity. And the stage for this confusion to take hold and to rob the church of her faith is right here, right now, set up to absolutely destroy you. They can, they can make a decision like that. What I don't get, I got into this, and I was going to preach on it, but I probably shouldn't. These little things we have in our hands right here, okay? This should be scary to you. But we're having the, this other class, safe class and everything on this. But I'll tell you what, you know what would be really safe? If the federal government actually said, no nudity, period, on the Internet. And you know all they have to do is press a button. Done. Done. It's just done. Will we do it? No. No. Why? Why? You see, if the parents do it, then the children want to do it, and the parents can't tell the children not to do it because the parents do it themselves. I don't care if it's smoking. I don't care if it's drinking. I don't care. 85% of the men pick up their first drink from their parents. 76% of the women... Right now, that come into our program were raped, molested when they were young by somebody that they thought loved them. Now, I want you to think about these. 90% of all addicts come from, ready for this, divorced or highly dysfunctional homes. And so you got 10% of them out there where good folks, good families, but they hang out with the wrong people, get caught up. You know how that goes. But one button could close us down. What about in the state of Idaho? Why don't the legislators make a law that's saying in the state of Idaho, pornography on the phone anywhere is absolutely illegal. Why? It destroys home. It destroys our children. It destroys, destroys, destroys. Why don't we make laws? Instead, we make laws saying that you cannot even tell a child that wants to make a sex change. You cannot counsel them not to do it. State of Washington, it's illegal to count somebody, counsel somebody against it. Oh, but did I tell you you can counsel people for it? You just can't counsel them against it. Good is bad. Bad is good. Shall I remind you what Scripture says it's going to be right before he comes back? If you don't think we're living in it, we are. Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. See, the faith of the church is what has been so devastated through all of this. When COVID happened, most of the churches closed their doors. Everybody knows here that we, we were not going to do that. We tested it to find out what it was. But thank God for the board. Thank for the board that's right here. And thank God for the pastors and the leadership here that said, we are never going to close the doors of this church. And the reason for that is because the church needs to be alive and well when anything goes on like that. If there's sickness, come and get prayed for. Well, I can't. Church is closed. Pastor, he's got three masks on. Do you know what it's like to talk to somebody like this? Do you know how horrible it is? You can't see their smiles. You can't see their frowns. And the worst thing is, ready for this? I think it's child abuse to the max. I'm getting on another subject. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the, and listen to what he says. I'm beseeching you, but um, this is the reason that I'm doing it right here, okay? By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's our hope. That's our hope. And by our gathering together unto him, our koinonia, our love for God and our hope to see Christ and to get with brothers and sisters for that fellowship to gain faith. Faith. You don't have faith because you haven't hung around faith. 
that ye be not soon shaken in your mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as far from us, and that the day of Christ is at hand. He's getting ready to come. And he wants us not to be shaken in our minds, in our spirits. And the way to do that is you got to keep your hope and you keep your koinonia going. Keeping the word together. Remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the, the word of God. You've got to keep the word coming and going amongst us all the time. It's the only thing that makes a difference. It's the only thing that's alive. Let no man deceive you by any means. Every time they say that, if somebody would do a report, a topic, when you do your topicals, on let no man be deceived. Every time you see that mentioned, pay attention because they were being deceived. And so now, whether it be Paul or somebody else that's talking about it, you have to know that they were deceived then by doing this and, or watching this or seeing this, hearing this. And so now he's talking to us and says, be not deceived. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there comes. And this is where we get our word apostasy of the church. A falling away first. And this is where the apostate church comes in. A church that calls themselves a church, but they are not a church. They have fallen away from God. The word apostate of the church uh, alone, apostate, means you can walk away from your faith. Now, a lot of people have a hard time with that. What do you think the word apostasy means? The apostate church, well, it was a church, oh, they must not have ever believed. It. I don't, that's a non-point to me. The bottom line is it's still talking to a church you thought they were a church. But here they become apostate. In that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, it plays out. After that point. So first, before the man of sin is going to be revealed in the end. That son of perdition. The other time that it's mentioned is when he actually came into Judas. And that's when the Lord said, you've got to go do what you're going to do. He went out and hung himself. When that son of man is revealed in the end, then the church has already went apostate. They lost their faith. Their faith was in the man that was standing behind here or the nice worship crew or maybe the benevolent things they were doing within their cities. We, we fed people and we clothed people and we had all these things for people. But the bottom line is they never got saved. They never were born again. And unless they're saved and born again, all of our fruit is in vain. Where are the watchmen on the walls to start crying out what is real? Who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you of these things. He gave a timeline. He reminds them of past tense. But now, present tense, ye know what withholdest. That's that that's going to keep... Uh, from something happening, okay? So what withholded that he might be revealed in his time? Something's here. Something's here that is holding the enemy back. What is it? And then it says, for the mystery, that means people don't know it, of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth, that's the same word that's, that's used that I just talked about, withholdeth. It means to hold down will let until he be taken out of the way. And then, future tense, right after that, shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. We know when that happens. We can read Revelation. We know when that happens, when that two-edged sword comes. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders you got to understand that Satan, in order to sift you of your faith, is going to try to do the same things that God would do. The signs and the wonders, you go, well, obviously it's a Christian thing because there are lots of signs and wonders and gold dust and all this kind of stuff. Hang on, let me tell you something. Praise God if that is happening. But I'll tell you what, I don't care about any of those things. I really don't. If the Lord wants to fill my teeth with gold, well, praise God, do it. But the bottom line is, 
I care about souls. If it's not bringing souls and all you're doing is chasing after signs and wonders, the Bible says that that's an evil generation that does that. And then it says, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because why? Because they received, and this is it, not the love of the truth that they may be saved. The love of the truth. The United States does not have a love for truth. It's not in the media. It's definitely not in our local paper. The love of the truth is gone. Everybody wants an opinion. Everybody wants somebody to speak what they want, what they hear. But the love of the truth. What is the truth? Somebody give me the truth about, I don't know. There's too many mixed things. That's confusion. That goes from Satan. That comes from Satan. I get worked up over this stuff. So it says in verse 11, and for this cause, because they did not have a love for the truth. For that cause, that's why God sent them a strong delusion. That word strong means operation abilities, efficiency. Energy is the word that's used for that. And that is the action of it. So in other words, God is going to, when he sends them a strong delusion, a strong delusion is one that has been planned out, set up, designed, very efficient. And let me tell you something. He let them have it. You want to believe the lie? Here you go. By the way, it's ongoing. They're not done. They are far from done. Why Fauci is not in prison, I have no idea. They talk about the millions of people that must have died and all of this. Do you know that no more people died during those years than the years before that? None. Well, actually, in this, uh, in this particular county, there were less people. And I forget what it was. I looked that up. I already told you guys that, like seven or something like that. So you need to understand that in verse 12, it says that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. But then they had pleasure, and I'm ending with this particular idea. They had pleasure in that unrighteousness. They took pleasure in it. These things right here, you may not be there. Maybe you, maybe you haven't gone out of your marriage. But you sure take pleasure watching others that have. Maybe you say, well, I'm not a child molester and I'm not a... But I'll tell you what. If every one of you could turn in your phones in the churches around Kootenai County, we're going to find out just how many people that say they don't have pleasure in those that do. When a, a little thing, a little push of a button could shut her down. Could shut all of that down in a heartbeat. And they have pleasure in unrighteousness. You mean they would actually say that the riots in the street are good? You mean they would actually defund the police that are supposed to stop those riots from burning down the houses and the local businesses? You mean they would make your own laws and not go through Congress? But they just write their own laws and it just is. How did that become just is? How about the cartel being allowed to human traffic people right through the border? And yet, what are we doing? We're still keeping it open, knowing that fentanyl made by China, sent from China to Mexico, sent from Mexico in the United States by hundreds and hundreds, thousands and millions of pills coming across. Do they want to stop it? No. There are some good agents that are down there that are trying. But for the most part, the leadership of our country and a lot of the people doing nothing about it are allowing that stuff to come right into our country because we have not closed our borders to it. And the border of your heart, what have you closed it to and what have you opened it to? Shame on us. Pornography. Billions and billions of dollars in it. Slaving out girls, 11 to 13 years of age are a big portion of them. 11 to 13. You touch my 11 to 13 year old, you're going to be meeting something about that big. Amen. 
And you say, well, pastor, that's, you can't just do that. Well, if nobody else will, because they got to be stopped. Enough is enough. Pornography does not need to be allowed. It can be disallowed by a push of a button. It's perverting the minds of America. It's perverting the minds of your children. And now we just find out the new stats that uh, the majority of these kids at nine years of age are watching pornography on their phones. My first question, why is a nine-year-old boy have a phone? Parents say, because I like him to be quiet when we're someplace, so I let him play games on it. Oh, he's playing games on it, all right. He's getting pretty smart. How about our libraries in our cities, our school system, allowing porn in our libraries? Do you know that for the, for the children, it is illegal. Illegal. You can't do it. And yet, nobody is enforcing it. They let them do it. You can go to the libraries, you can see the whole sections. And we've got a good group of people in our town that are, that are doing that. Our own city council members stating the way to uh, stop an opposing view is to destroy their companies, their families. Are you kidding me? That's what you really feel rather than reason together with, on something? No, there's right and wrong. How about making it impossible to counsel against the sex change? Passing laws to do that. They don't pass a law that says you can't do it. They pass laws to promote everything going in that direction. And all we hear is, follow the science. And yet the suicide rate of those people that do do that are escalating through the ceiling. Repeatedly taking pleasure in the unrighteousness that is among us rather than to fight against it. These people are going to be damned. Why? Because they didn't want to believe the truth. Today, we can make a difference. You can make a difference. Whether or not it's voting on the levies, whether or not it's, why? What, what difference, Pastor, would that make on righteous or unrighteousness? Because the unrighteousness is taking place at these places, and the only way that you can stop them is to stop the flow of the money. If you want to stop the cartel, you've got to stop the flow of the money. You want to stop the drugs coming in, you've got to kill it where it starts. By the way, that starts, and it is an incredible designed thing by China through the cartel. And the cartel is bigger than any man could ever imagine. But you know what? Sometimes it happens because some people fear, fear the cartel. But you know what? There comes a time, like I was talking about, where the David Bobbitts and the Dons are going to stand up, and they're going to draw a line right there in concrete, and they're going to say, we're not going any further. This is where this all stops. This is where it stops. I will not allow this into my community. I will not allow this into my home. I will not allow this over my children's phones anymore. Or I will get rid of their phones. I'll get rid of my phone. We'll go back to a little cord in the house. I believe maybe that's the way that we should go. It worked then. It'll work now. Oh, you don't understand. We got all this other info. Yeah, that's what everybody says. And they justify it. But you guys, every time as an older generation, we justify that. We also justify the absolute destruction of our children. We need to draw the line somewhere. You know where to do it in your own life. Do it. Bow your heads with me, please. We're going to give our children these bracelets, prayer warriors. We give it to them because we want to encourage them. We want the parents now to encourage them. Pray. This is happening in school. Pray. A friend of mine bullied me. Pray. Pray before your meals. Pray when you go. We're going to sleep at night. Pray. 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 Why? Because without that relationship with God, their faith is going to be sifted right out from underneath them. And you're going to watch it happen. And you're going to go, what happened? I'm not trying to give you a guilt complex on anything that's already in the past. But I can tell you, you can take authority now. In fact, you take authority right now. And I'm, anybody that is willing could come up to these altars right here on these stairs and say, you know what? I'm going to right now draw a line. And I'm going to tell the enemy he cannot cross this line with my family anymore. We are done. 
We are done. And I'm going to do my best within my community. I'm going to do whatever the Lord tells me to do from now on. But I will stand for righteousness. And if that's you, you could come. But I'm going to pray for the people that are in this room that God will do something to encourage the righteousness that is within you. You've got to do something about it. So in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you right now to solve this issue. I know that we're supposed to be a part of it. And I know, Lord God, that this church, even if this church alone would get out and vote when they're supposed to vote, we could literally turn the tide. Even one church is what they say. We could turn the tide on everything that's happening. So what's the real problem? The real problem is our faith. Do we really believe that we can make that big of a difference? Do we really believe that God can use me to be able to stop something like that? It's huge. Johnny's going down to Mexico just so we have a witness of what's going on. And Lord, I pray that you'll keep him safe. But Lord, I also pray that he'll come back and he will, while I'm gone to... Uh, India he's going to give testimony what did I see what did I experience and why is this not being stopped Lord it's because evil has got a foothold in America and that foothold Lord God they are trying very hard in Coeur d'Alene but together Lord God together as the church all over Kootenai County starting right here Lord God I ask in the name of Jesus, in unity, that your hand, the Lord God, by your hand, you would rebuke the enemy, that you would rebuke the pornography, you would rebuke the sex changes, you would rebuke that type of counsel, you would rebuke all of the garbage that's in our libraries, that you, by your hand, Lord God, would rebuke these things, take them out, Lord God, however you so choose. But we need a mighty move of God, and we need the church to wake up and we need to stop making excuses of why I was not involved. Do we really take pleasure in unrighteousness? I would love to say no. And yet, Lord God, here we are. And so enough is enough. Enough is enough. Lord, I remember even watching on TV. You always had this love affair going on where this guy treated his wife bad. And so she decided to go off and, and she met another guy that was so kind. And by the time the movie's over, we are rooting for this woman and this man. And then all of a sudden, it shows him in a bed. It might not have shown what happened, but we're not dumb. And here we are rooting for them. That was so deceiving but we bought into it. And here we are, Lord God, we're bought into these lies and this confusion. So give us today a love for the truth. We claim it, we ask it, we beg for it, we knock on your door till we get it. We're gonna ask until truth, Lord God, is in our home again, in our life again. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, that name it is above all names. And everyone said, Amen.